you can ask a question just directly to Ray or myself or, or, or to everybody, okay? We are called panelists, okay. So first off, not everybody knows who I am. My name is Darcy LaRocque and I've coached thousands of agents since 2010. I was on three seasons uh, on TV. I don't know if everybody knows that, but I love doing it. Um, but that went wayside. I was on three seasons teaching tech tips and I've written articles and magazines and newspapers. I've spoken at countless real estate conferences around North America, which I love, 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 love doing. I've won the prestigious top 100 uh, women changing the shape of real estate and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of success stories for agents and brokers. I absolutely love doing what I do. And uh, my unique knowledge actually really um, comes into play when you'll see when we talk about this because I looked after email servers for many, many years. I looked after wireless devices and how email flows into, into the wireless devices and how different apps work. And so, um, and I used to program and build websites. I no longer have any interest in doing that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I have a really unique background that helps out agents. Oh, and my husband's an agent. That might be a key thing there, right? Um, so, oh, sorry, let me just, I got to do something here because I'm not seeing my, just a sec, when I hit present, what happened here? Just a sec, I want to see my notes just so I don't miss anything. There you go. No, no. Where are they? There you go. So, Ray, you'll monitor the, um, the chat, okay? Yep. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. So um, we want to celebrate little victories in our business as well, right? Like uh, what's happening in your business that you're, you're happy about? I mean, lots of times we kind of go a little sideways, but we really want to celebrate victories that we have, especially in these times, right? There's so many weird things going on. Um, so today is always about cloud storage. And again, I think people get quite confused about what does that actually mean? So cloud storage, there's an email side of cloud storage and a computer side of cloud storage. And I'm going to differentiate them so you really understand what the difference is, okay? And again, please ask questions. I'm going to try and pop up the Q&A thing just so I can see them again. Hold on. Because I let, there we are, chats. Oh, go just a sec, you guys. Give me a minute. Just so I don't miss anything. Um, okay, morphed into Crest, hope you're well. Oh, cool, Michael. Um, Mernaz, yes, you can use the chat. Oh, sorry, Ray's answering that. <laughs> sorry. You're on it. Okay, let it back to this. Okay, so email and cloud storage. So basically, an email address sits in the cloud. Your emails sit in the cloud. Any email folders, right, in, in email folders sit in the cloud your contacts sit in the cloud, and your calendars sit in the cloud. So, and this is really where, uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about this, but this is really important to understand. What I find is most agents have mucked up emails sitting in the cloud, and they have multiple emails sitting in the cloud, and then, you know, they don't know why if they update a contact in this one email that doesn't show over here, well, because they're completely separate, they sit on different servers in the cloud, in different areas and so unbeknownst to you you get all messed up with your iphone and your android and your ipad and your macbook and your mac air and your <laughs> laptop whatever you're using because stuff is not not all integrated okay and then on the flip side we also have computer uh cloud storage so that's anything that sits on your computers any files any folders documents music photos Anything like that, does that make sense? So anything literally that sits on your computer is also, or can be, usually when I meet agents, it's not, but it can be all up in the cloud so that you never have to worry about things and they're backed up and integrated and syncing in the cloud, okay? Yeah, we're all good? So far, so good, any questions? Doesn't look like it, I'm just looking here, okay. I don't see there's any questions. Okay, so we're going to start first about email because this is the one that I see over and over and over again that I think that if, if you're inside your business and you don't look outside how a client might see you. So let's say we're going to uh, hire a lawyer and all things being equal, you like them both, you interview them both for this 
hopefully not a big lawsuit, for whatever reason you're getting a lawyer, okay? And that this guy up here, his email address is joethebestlawyer1973 at yahoo.com. And the gal's email is jenny at smithlaw.com. Now, I pretty much don't even have to tell you which one looks more professional, right? Do we even believe that Joe is a real lawyer? And why wouldn't he be using Joe at blah, blah, blah.com, right? His name at his domain.com. Does that make sense? And so this is a huge uh, eye opener for many agents because what I see agents have, they use that old MSM email or in Canada, I know we've got some of my great American friends here as well. In Canada, we have internet service providers like Shaw and Telus, absolutely horrible to run your business off of, okay? Horrible, and I can't, I really, can I stress that enough, <laughs> right? For our, my American friends, you use a lot of MSN, AOL, there's Cox.net, um, any of these internet service provider emails are really a horrible way to run your business, and I'll explain that in a little bit. But what we want you to do is really to understand how Jenny would be set up properly. It isn't just a matter of saying, oh, I'm gonna go do this, because what happens is when agents go, oh my gosh, I'll stop it and I'll just start using, you know, like Jenny at Smith Law, but then it's not set up properly, it's not configured properly, then when you email, it's actually emailing from her Yahoo account, well, that's no better. You want everything to be built and running a business under a properly configured business email, okay? Let's see, any questions? Uh, oh, there is. Let me just go back. Hey, Chris, how you doing? Nice to see you here. Recently, I started a document. Let me just read a bunch of things here and see what you can do. Recently, I started a document with clients and he called me and said I had shared an entire file that was pretty certain that I did not want to do. So I went and shut down the link. Can you please walk us through sharing a single document from Google Drive? Um, I could, <laughs> but... Chris, it, it is actually done all inside the membership. So we, I have a membership site for agents because I'll talk about it at the end, but that is in week four. If you can go back and look at that, and if you still don't get it, reach out and we'll maybe go back and look at that module. But we do explain how to share properly because that's a great question because what happens, whether an agent is using iCloud or Dropbox or Google Drive or FileStream, they have to understand sharing. And you as a recipient have probably seen that before. An agent shares like, like maybe Chris did that accidentally shared a whole folder that he didn't mean to, or, or they sent it to you with the wrong rights and you then had to request rights to it. Does that make sense? So it wastes your time. So there definitely is a way of doing things properly. So hopefully that answered Chris, okay? So that is a whole module in week four and you you obviously get always have access to that program, okay? Let me just see, other question. Currently I'm paying a monthly fee to Apple for cloud storage for all data, photos, videos, documents. Do you have a better alternative for using cloud storage platform without paying a monthly fee to Apple while keeping my 50 gig per month with Apple? Yeah, so Chris, that's a good question. So. If you've heard me speak before, is that the free version of anything is probably not good, okay? So I do have suggestions to agents um, to be set up a specific way from top down. That means website, email, the CRMs, or not CRM, the cloud storage is attached to that email, and then the CRM works with that email and if you don't know what a crm is that's uh, client relationship management and that's what every agent should have that is a gold mine a money maker but most agents don't have one or only pay for one and never use it because they're not properly configured okay did i answer your question i hope chris at the end i'm going to give you guys an opportunity to uh, um, if you want to set up a 30-minute consult with me so i can even see if i can help you and we'll check it out. I call it strategy sessions and we look at your setup and see. So that's probably your best option, Chris. Uh, I did a deal two years ago where an agent accidentally forwarded the entire client's conversation <laughs> about the top and bottom. Oh no. Scott, like, did you win that one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. I'm going to actually, I got it. That's really funny and good for Scott. I'm going to read that again. So you guys understand the importance and value of this. If, did the other agent figure out what they did or do you didn't oh my god they must probably felt horrible okay let me just read that again that scott said he did a deal two years ago where the agent accidentally 
forward his entire conversation with his client about their top and bottom probably prices and what they would accept. So that is horrible. Now, I don't know if that was done by email, which is horrible, but if it was done because he was saving it into a folder structure and then he saved the folder, you have to be really, really, really aware of what you're doing. I mean, that was good for, good for you, Scott. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully you said that after. I don't know. Okay, so it is really important to understand. And thank you, guys. I have to say this because now that you've probably attended way more Zoom sessions, I've been doing this for, oh, gosh, a decade. You now understand, like, that it's way better if people ask questions, right, not just listen to somebody talk because it's not as much fun for me without actually you guys participating as well, okay? All right. So let's talk about issues with incorrect email addresses. So. For one, that lawyer looked what? Let's go back to the lawyer. He looked pretty unprofessional, right? And we know how old he is. Now, whether that would matter or not, maybe, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, right? Maybe you thought he was older and then, oh my gosh, he's only 73, what's that? I don't know, 40 something, right? <laughs> okay, unprofessional. It's inconsistent in your branding because you're branding for Shaw, Talus, AOL, MSN. You're not for yourself, right? Less confident and trustworthy. Well, those are there's studies done about that. You don't necessarily look legitimate like you're a real business because you're using these old ways of doing things, okay? And back in 2016, a small business owner and customer survey did a survey and said 75% of consumers say an email address matching your domain is critical to trust and professionalism. Would you email Joe... Royal Bank Joe 1973 at yahoo.ca if he wants to know a uh, deal with you about Royal Bank. No, that's a Canadian bank. I think it's actually in the US as well. You wouldn't, and I don't know why this industry has, well, I actually do know why, because you're not taught how to run your business like a business from the beginning, okay? Okay, and here's the other problem. Again, we talked about this, like remember Jenny at Jenny Smith Law? This is what I see agents do. They kind of configure out that they own the domain Smith Law, let's say, and they can configure it so that if I email Jenny at Smith Law, it's forwarded to the free email. But then when we communicate back and forth, don't think it looks like Jenny at Smith Law. It looks like this 1973 at yahoo.ca or .com, okay? And it's, and it's a lot of configuring to get something to kind of try and work and it doesn't really work well. So you want it set up properly okay if Jenny Smith law was uh, set up properly on all devices on all computers no matter what she touches it's actually emailed from Jenny at smithlaw.com the contacts are attached to that the calendars are attached to that the email folder structures attached to that and any device that she touched looks exactly the same you hear me? I pause because this is so cool. Okay. But this is cloud storage. Your email is sits up in the headquarters. Let me just see. There's another question. Um, definitely suggest take the seven. Oh, thank you. So Mirnaz is in our, my seven week program for agents. And I believe you're on to week four. I think you're just completing week three. Um, and just saying how great it is. I love doing it. I'll talk a little bit about it at the end. Again, we can talk, do a 30 minute consult and just see if uh, it's a good fit for both of us. All right, keep going. Email education. I always like to, because this is my thing, my thing is email. And I know some people go, oh, roll your eyes, email, it's so boring. But it's actually pretty interesting because um, of what's happened over the course of many years, which is cool, but also that a lot of people are stuck back on old ways of doing things. And I want you to really understand, regardless of if you set up a chat, you can understand why your stuff might be mucked up, okay? So let's talk about email education, which again is in the cloud. So no matter what you've got here, whether it's Gmail or iCloud or Yahoo Mail or Hotmail, Outlook email, AOL email, like there's a hundred, hundreds of them, if not thousands of them, they all sit on a server up in the cloud and you access them on your various devices, right? Does that make sense? So let me talk about, I'm gonna say this again so you get this. Every single email address you have, including Apple's iCloud, the at me and iCloud accounts, have a possible folder structure that you may or may not use, your golden contacts, 
attached to it and your calendar attached to it. Okay. This is really important to understand. So if you've got an iCloud at me account that has that, and maybe you use it, maybe you don't. What I see a lot of the time is people do, but they don't realize that all their contacts are being saved in iCloud and then they can't figure when they go on their computer, their windows computer, where are my contacts? So you have to manage them twice. That makes sense. So everything is on a separate server and that's, you got to understand that. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Uh, I can't say, I can, I can say, oh, sorry. <laughs> it's not you, Chris. It's me. Um, I can say firsthand that this is a very important step. I had several emails and the transition to one was somewhat scary, but yeah, it was scary. I know, but it was simplified things dramatically for me. I encourage everyone to do so. I can't believe, you know what? I've never had so many of my uh, members inside one of my webinars. So, you know what? I'm glad you guys are here because it's just reiterates what we did, right? And makes you understand every time you hear something, you might pick up something different. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate that uh, comment. Um, okay, now let's continue on. Okay, I like to say, and just because it makes more sense, uh, if I could say that email is the headquarters of your business. You have a domain and then you've got an email headquarters, okay? So even right now, even if it's not set up what I would call properly, it still is the headquarters. If you're using Shaw, that's the headquarters. If you're using AOL, that's the headquarters or Yahoo, okay? So I'm gonna say headquarters, but I want you to understand because over the course of decades now in doing this, it's sad for me to say decades now. <laughs> it's true, like a de two and a half decades, a, a little, maybe a little more of actually doing email, Again, wireless devices come along and what the same issues that happen to every single person. Okay, so on a wireless device, you have a viewer that you can view your email. We don't care what the headquarters is. You could view all different headquarters on this first one is Apple Mail. Okay, that's the one that comes with Apple devices. Or you might have not used Apple, you might have downloaded Gmail or you download Outlook or you downloaded a numerous one of the apps that are out there to be able to download to your device and view the headquarters. Okay. Does that make sense? Because sometimes people say, oh no, I use Outlook. I, I, my email's Outlook. And when I go to look at it, no, they use Outlook to view their email, but their email is Shaw. Do, does that make sense? Give me a high five say yes, because this is really important to understand. This is what I get. A lot of people get confused about this. Okay. So I'm going to keep going, but I'd love for you to, you know, if you have questions, please ask them. And if you understand, say, yeah, I get it. So the same thing on a browser, you might view Shaw with Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer. You might view Telus with Shaw, Firefox, Internet Explorer. You might view Gmail with on Chrome or Firefox, Internet Explorer. Does that make sense? Again, just viewers of your email. Okay, one more, and I'm gonna go one, and then I'll repeat this. I'm gonna show one more example. On a computer, you can download Outlook to view any of the emails that are up in the headquarters. You can use Mac Mail that comes with Macs to view any of the email headquarter emails. So all of these things, all of these things are only viewers of your headquarters. Can you tell me if that makes sense or should I explain it again? Come on, you guys. Got it, got it, yes, say it again. I'm okay saying it again. Okay, I'm gonna explain, I'm just gonna say it really briefly again and if it's still confusing, book a call and we'll talk about it. So anything that you use to look at your email, whether you're doing it on your phone, your tablet, your computer, their software or browsers or downloads or apps. So on the first row is what you could download onto your, or onto your, your uh, phone or tablet, and they're called apps. So you, you could use Apple Mail, that's the first one right here. You could use Gmail, you could use Outlook. You could use Spark. There's like, I don't know, hundreds of other ones that you could download to view email. Okay, it's just an email viewer. You could on a computer or on your phone, I guess. I don't know a lot of people doing that because they usually use the top row, but you could go into Chrome or Firefox or Internet Explorer and go to Shaw, Telus, MSN, AOL, uh, Gmail, Hotmail, right? You could use a browser or 
the bottom row was the downloads. So you could download uh, Office 365 Business Suite, which is Outlook, Word, Excel, PowerPoint. Does that make sense? And you could view your email on Outlook. You could, the other one here, this little guy is MacMail. You could view your mail uh, on MacMail. Okay, we got it? So the email headquarters have really nothing to do with these, what we call viewers or email clients in my business, they're called email clients, but I think it makes more sense to you guys to call them viewers. They're just viewers of your email, okay? Okay, education part one done. You feel smarter, a little bit smarter? Darcy, we have a question from, yeah. uh, when I set up my, when I set up email with my domain, can I bring over my existing email in my at Gmail account? You can if you work with me, that's my specialty. <laughs> it's a good question then. <laughs> that is actually what I do uh, to help agents is uh, throughout the seven week program, you get everything set up properly to get, and, and you probably have other sources where your stuff is. I've, I've very rarely seen it where it's just one headquarters with all the stuff attached. It's usually four or five of them. And we wanna look at every single one of them and grab the information, grab the contacts, any calendar appointments that you might've put there, um, migrate the data if you want or not. It just depends. We look through every single one, okay? So hopefully that answers your question. Um, so here's the thing about why it matters as well, is that you guys have heard this, but I actually don't think you understand the implications in your business about why this is hurting you to have this old technology of POP or IMAP, okay? So POP's been around for a coon's age. I, like when I first, uh, 20 years ago, it was POP email. I can't remember when IMAP came along Oh my gosh, I don't even remember, but it was more than 10, 15 years ago. And then there's been, an, I call it the new way of doing things. And the new way has probably been around for gosh, 10 years. <laughs> so it's not that new, but it's probably new to you. Okay, so let's understand if you have a pop email account. Shaw, tell us, um, I'm just trying to think of, uh, I can't think, I don't know what everybody has because I didn't look at, I didn't look at it. I didn't look at everybody's email addresses, but you should find out, and this is what the problems are, okay? So with POP, on any device that you uh, download one of those viewers or use one of those viewers, it is a one way. So that means that, let's just show, show this, POP, for syncing email, it downloads it onto your phone, but if you also use the browser on your desktop, they do not talk to each other. So that means if you delete something off your phone, it does not delete up above or anywhere else that you have are using it. This is where the confusion comes in, right? Why is my mail unread on this guy when I read it on this guy? It does not sync contacts. So you have contacts on your phone and then you might have contacts up in the browser and then you might, if you're using Outlook or Mac mail and syncing that old pop account, it also has contacts sitting alone there. It has calendar sitting alone there. It never, ever, ever will integrate directly with a any client relationship management software for, for an agent, okay? And it does not have drive, any kind of drive, cloud storage, drive space, okay? Um, so let me just see, I couldn't believe that Darcy found an email, which I, <laughs> I just worked with Marinez, so thanks for popping in here and you telling them. Yeah, right, and so, what she's saying is that we actually looked at all her, her contacts. So we do have a, a session where I work directly one-on-one -on -one with agents um, through this program. And I look at each of your email addresses. And it was funny with Marinez, she said, no, no, I don't use that one. And I'm always like, you know what, let's just look at it anyhow. I don't care if you use it, let's just take a look. And there was all these contacts that she didn't know were sitting in that particular one, right? So we could get those contacts, put it in the right proper business email server and have them all in one location. So thanks, Marnaz. Um, embarrassed to ask, but need to know what is POP or IMAP. You are, not, you know what? What I always say to people, I never want anyone to ever be embarrassed about anything about technology. I've been doing this for honest, like I said, a long, 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 long time, and I'm always learning because new things come up. And so never be embarrassed, please, because it's it's just the way of life. POP means oh, it doesn't even matter what it means it, it's uh because <laughs> uh, i can't remember now uh google it <laughs> internet mm, 
Oh my God, because I don't even deal with pop and IMAP anymore, so it's irrelevant. It's, uh, pop is something protocol, office protocol. Uh, oh, you're testing me. But it doesn't matter. All you need to know, Ray, pop that in with it so you can Google it. But what it doesn't do is the issue. Pop is such old technology, we don't want to be using that in our business. We want to be in the new way, which I'll show you in a minute. So years later, after POP allowed us to at least be able to communicate and have email and contacts and calendar, right? Was, at least we could. Then it came along IMAP, which is one step better. Okay, but with IMAP, now on all devices, if we're using IMAP, we actually can sync our email. If I delete my email off my phone, it'll delete off whatever else I go and view it. Does that make sense? But, oh, it syncs folders too, which is awesome. Folders on attached to an email, right? If some people don't even understand that you can have folders inside an email, but if you did, it'll sync the folders. But then we have problems with all the other stuff. So it's a little bit better, but now still, if you add a contact to that headquarter email, it doesn't add it everywhere. Now you're managing multiple databases and you're confused because you can't find your stuff, right? So that new way of doing things that's pretty old is that a properly configured, proper business email, it does every single thing. So if I'm gonna make it really easy for you to understand is that if it's set up on the right-hand side way, I update my phone contact, no matter what kind of phone, it updates my CRM contact, right? It updates my Outlook if that's what I'm viewing, it updates my browser contact if that's what I, where I view my stuff, it updates my Mac mail, my tablet, everything talks to each other and vice versa. So it means no matter which spot I update, it updates everywhere. You're not managing multiple sets of contacts or databases. Does that make sense? And are you going, yee-hoo? Because it's awesome, awesome, awesome when this is working properly. Am I missing any questions? Thanks, Ray. Ray put down these uh, uh, the actual answers of which pop and I have. <laughs> I don't remember what pop it. Ah, post office protocol, right? It doesn't even mean anything. Post office. Yeah, it's about as good as the post office. Let's go with that. And IMAP is Internet Messaging Access Protocol. Um, okay, so let's see. Any other teaches us the proper way? Our Lord and Savior Darcy. <laughs> Scott. Okay, so let's talk about issues that you might have if you're not set up properly, okay? You read an email and it shows unread elsewhere. I, I keep talking about that, but that's frustrating, right? So you read an email on your phone and then you're out and about and later on you go to your computer and you're like, oh, did I answer that? Oh, I don't remember. So then you have to go and try and figure that out. You move an email to a folder and it doesn't move elsewhere or you can't find it. You update a contact on your phone and it doesn't update everywhere. I also see what people do. Sometimes they think they're doing a great job and they're on their phone and I'm just going to clean up a bunch of emails. So you go through and you delete a hundred emails and then you go back to your computer and those hundred emails are still there, right? That's pop, pop account because it does not talk to folders or email at all. Once it's downloaded and once it's on a device, okay? Uh, you update your CRM contact info and it doesn't update your phone, your Outlook, Mac mail, and any other sets of contacts. Apple users in particular have a whole other problem, which I can fix, but it's a, it's a, I kind of don't like, I get why Apple does this, but I don't like why, why Apple does this because it messes you up. So Apple users in particular, when you're saying yes, 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 and you're setting up everything, um, it is to Apple's iCloud. And they are really proprietary. So the problem with that is that let's say the latest next greatest thing and you want to move i mean i would know how to get everything off but you wouldn't be able to do it not easily okay what we want and how i want agency to set up is it's kind of agnostic it doesn't matter what device you use everything still works you can still use mac mail to view a properly bu uh, configured business email you can still use anything but I don't like that Apple kind of forces you, and it, it does force you to use iCloud, but there's ways to not force you to use iCloud, okay? Um, you're managing multiple sets of databases. Now I see this all the time, that people manage them on spreadsheets or, uh, or, uh, <laughs> or just use paying for a CRM and not really using it. There's so many different ways 
of uh, people managing multiple databases when it really doesn't have to be that way, okay? You have access to different emails on different devices. I've seen people say, well, I can only set up this email on this device, so that's the only way to respond. That's not true, okay? That is not true. It's just because you don't understand all this, okay? You can have all your, all your emails on one device if you choose to. I always try to talk people into, why do you have five emails? Do we really need them? But if you really, really need them, then we talk about that, okay? Um, now, people that are using brokerage addresses, here's another uh, thing I like to always talk about, is you use forwarding. So a lot of the brokerage addresses are forwarded to your, hopefully, business email or whatever email you're using. Forwarding can lead to delays up to 30 minutes. Now, in most industries, who cares, right? But if you can stop the forwarding, great, and just use your uh, email address for everything, great. Because we also know that stuff happens. If you've been giving everybody out your name at your brokerage for years and then you decide to switch, that's the email they have. That is not the email that the, the brokerage, unless you worked out a deal, they're not gonna forward it to your new email address, right? I see this all the time. Like we don't know what gonna, what's gonna happen in the future, right? So you have to be really, really careful about that. Um, and another one is if you use your brokerage email, I never, ever, 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 I stress that enough, ever, ever <laughs> recommend if the brokerage actually just, it just isn't just forwarding for you that they actually say, hey, we're going to give you email. So their, your name at theirbrokerage.com. Please think this through. Because I have, again, being, I've done this for years now. I have agents come to me saying, well, how do I get my stuff? And I'm like, oh, okay, don't tell them. Let's try and figure this out before you tell them that you're leaving. Because usually there is a way to export the data. But if you don't know enough, so this is worth this session alone. If you don't know enough, don't give notice unless you get your information back first, okay? But I would never, ever, ever <laughs> use a, a brokerage email. They think it's in your best interest, but they, they own the data. It's their, they're paying for it, included in your brokerage fees. And usually they do the low end uh, payment fee. So a lot of stuff doesn't come with that uh, business email, okay? How are we doing here? Oh, hey Dean, how you doing? Uh, you've got Bouge, yeah. contacts do not sync. I have suspended Bouge as a platform. See? Ah, so Dean, we talked about this a while ago, right? Where I said, we won't use, this is a Remax new tool. Um, and I don't, I wouldn't use it yet. That's all I'm gonna say. I wouldn't use it yet. Um, Cause I don't think it's quite ready. Uh, so yeah, okay, we did talk about, I know. So anyhow, enough said, I'm not gonna bash anything. Okay, let's keep going. Um, your emails end up in spam because you use info at, sales at, or some free email addresses. So if you go Google role-based emails, emails end up in spam because they're not considered a true email address. So if you're an agent who's using info at yourdomain.com, you should stop using it, okay? I don't wanna keep going on this thing, but that's really bad for your business. Um, GoDaddy might say they'll register your email with your website hoster, or I never recommend doing GoDaddy with your email, okay? If you are using it, I guess it's okay, but <laughs> I really don't recommend it. I usually like looking how it's set up because a lot of times it's, oh, paid email, sorry. The free one is horrible, but the paid one, they've set you up on something maybe or maybe you shouldn't have done, okay? So let's just talk about that. Um, an agent says, whoops, hold on, let me just see here. I got too many windows open, my friends. Um, an agent said that they sent you an email, but you can't find it. Hey, we just got an offer, are you in? So this is an actual uh, true story. Um, a client was using old technology for email and some emails weren't getting through and she lost the deal for her client and herself for this because maybe the address, so they were texting, when the story goes, they were texting. And then for some reason, the agent didn't text back. I get why, because you don't want to group text a bunch of agents. You got to individually email them. He emailed to one of those old accounts. It ended up in spam. She didn't see it. She would have, anyhow, it was a whole sad story. She's now sorted out and on a proper business email server and she, that will not happen again. Um, but it was sad. It's a sad situation. Um, 
We don't want you also tied to your Shaw, Telus, AT&T, Cox, whatever your internet service provider, because you want to move, they don't have it in there, and they're like, you have to stay in your house because you're, you've been using Shaw email for your business. <laughs> that just doesn't make sense, right? And you should, and there's pop, those, those, most of those uh, internet service provider emails that you might be using are on pop accounts or IMAP accounts. So you are having many, many, many issues with it. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Let's keep going here. Um, if you're trying to piecemeal all your software where to try and get it to work and it doesn't, and it's just frustrating, right? It is really frustrating. And we know that this causes a lot of lost time, a lot of lost dollars, and a lot of stress, really. I know a lot of stress. A lot of times when I, after I finish working with people, yeah, they're gonna make more money, um, but the real key is that they're gonna be less stressed out about their stuff because their stuff is just gonna work, okay? Um, and other experts don't talk about all the tech side. They say they will guarantee to make you so many dollars by doing lead gens, pop buys, mail outs, Facebook ads, etc. I say, you ready what I say? Keep in touch with your damn clients. Why are you spending all this money on this other stuff? And you're not keeping in touch with the clients because your systems aren't properly set up to do so. And you uh, do not have a CRM that is properly set up to do so. Okay, can't, can't stress that enough. Okay, uh, and what if your system simply just worked for you and not against you, right? Okay, so what I wanna say, because everyone, before people would go out and say, I'm gonna go get a properly, business, properly set up configured business email. You don't know what that is, so please don't go just go do it. Again, at the end of this, I will give you a link and we'll do a follow up with the link to, to apply for us to see if we can help and wanna to work together. I only can help so many agents um, in my program. I can't let like 100 people in, so I'm, I have to be pretty picky about how many people because it's very, 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 a lot of one-on-ones and we do weekly Q and A's, okay? So just don't go and set something up. You'll be in a worse off situation. Okay, so high levels of stress, uh, high levels of stress. Look, Lorene, you're there. <laughs> so Lorene was talking about us helping us or helping us in our program. And there's a part where we send out to our CRMs, which Loreen hasn't done. And this is what she did uh, in that week. She was a little stressed out about losing deals, not knowing about repeat and referral business. She was getting in her own way. What we did is what we just literally talked about, getting everything working properly and Whoops, oh, the good part, I went by too fast. And she was sent the first email blast to her three past clients of getting, I can't talk. And now she's getting set up properly to do drip campaigns and get more repeat referral business. So her very first email blast to her clients, they responded back, right, Loreen? And they wanted to do business. It isn't that they don't want to do business with you, it's that they have forgotten about you and some other agent has been keeping in touch with them. And it's a very sad situation when that happens, okay? Like it's a really sad situation when that happens. So she's all good, I'm so happy when we talked and that happened because we know it works. And systems, when they're properly set up, you can easily keep track of who you're keeping in touch with, you send it out, right? And they go, oh, like in this case, Lorene, i just in the middle, my mom was just thinking about selling her house, do you wanna help? You know what I mean, like it's so important. Lorene, I'm actually closing on these three deals this weekend. Okay, you know what? I, I don't have my video on, but that, that just brings me joy. But I'm like, my eyes are welling up, my friend, because I know it works and I'm so thrilled for you. I like, oh, oh, you guys. <laughs> CRMs work when they're properly configured. I'm so thrilled. That is so amazing. Okay, I have to have a Zen moment. <sighs> okay, we're going to talk about cloud storage for files. Thank you, Lorene. Um, this is okay. Remember, we we're talking about email. Email is super important, obviously. Let's talk about files. I got 15 minutes because they're not as important, but they are important. <laughs> okay. So I again see people getting very confused over issues with uh, cloud storage uh, files, uh, not cloud storage software. Okay. So. This is the issues I see. You think you have to use the same cloud storage app that the other, other agent sends you as a link or a download or whatever they've done. That is not true. It's because you don't understand and the other agent doesn't understand. 
your personal email is linked to your cloud storage app, which means when you share, it's sharing from a personal email. And you know what's bad about that? If you are, again, that role-based email, info at, um, support at, whatever it might be, that role-based email, if you're sending links, that might end up in spam in their, in their inbox because the internet considers it spam. Okay, those email addresses, those role-based emails, they know they're not real email addresses. I mean, they're real email addresses, but they're not real people. It doesn't say Joe at blah, 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 okay? Okay, um, you can't pull up that important file on your phone. Now, this is one of the things, this is so much, wasting so much time, and I know that this happens out there still, that you're out and about, you need something, you don't have it on your phone that's with you, so you have to drive back to your office or your home to get that file. That is not necessary if your systems are properly set up anymore, okay? It is completely not necessary. And it wastes your time because, like, in, especially in large cities, maybe you have to drive an hour back quickly and then an hour back to where you were. Like, you really have to, you really, really, really have to have this understanding and completely set up properly, okay? I just, as I just talked about, you drive back and home. Okay, I don't even want to talk about faxing. What's faxing? Okay, I think we still have to fax the government. And who else do we fax to? Insurance agents. Other than that, who faxes anymore? Okay, you shouldn't be faxing. You should be sharing links to uh, files and folders, okay? Um, you also, this is another thing that I've seen agents do, is that they, let's say it's, uh, for our, our American friends, we call um, documents, strata documents. You call them HOA documents. So I'm going to say strata, but it's HOA. So let's say that you uh, don't know how to file share and, or folder share with all your documents in the folder. So what you end up doing is having to send three or four different emails because these strata docs are large and email servers won't take large files, right? So you have to do it a different way in a way more time consuming way. Have you guys ever done that? Does that make sense? So you don't wanna do that. And here, and I'm gonna help the whole world right now. <laughs> because I've seen this happen before. Do not take a picture of a Strata doc or HOA doc or any doc for that matter and save it as a JPEG file. That is a horrible thing to do for your fellow agents. You want to save it always as, what's the answer you guys? What do you want to save it? If you're going to save, save something to send and you don't want it to be a JPEG or a picture file, what do you want to save it as? Come on, first answer. Come on. Archie, you know what? Awesome. Archie answered right. He archer, he archer, he, he, he answered right. And so, you know what, Archie, at the end, I'm going to see if I'm going to review someone's website. If you want me to do your online presence, if you want me to do yours, great. If not, I'll do somebody else's, but remind me. Okay. Ray, remind me. Okay. You use multiple cloud storage services. This is also what I see is that you got You've downloaded Dropbox. If you're an Apple user, you have iCloud. And if you're um, a Gmail user, you download Google Drive. And you, maybe if you're a business user, you use FileStream. And so now, now you don't know where your shit is, right? Oh, where did I put it? Is it in Dropbox? Is it in Google Drive? Is it, you don't know. It's so confusing, right? So really, it, it's if you're not paying for cloud storage, I know that you're not using it properly. And so that's an issue with cloud storage, OK? All right, you're in, good, okay. Um, and then the worst case scenario, and I've had someone happen to, and I'll tell you that story, the worst case scenario is that your computer and wireless, or wireless device dies and all your files are gone. Now, can you imagine, imagine if your computer died right now and you're not set up properly, can you imagine, I bet your heart's just palp palpitating thinking about that, am I right? Because you're like, holy, where's my stuff? I don't know where my stuff is. Because if you are saving your stuff on your local hard drive of your computer and you're not using cloud storage properly, your stuff is gone. So this happened to a, a client who did not do what I suggested. He did not set up his cloud storage accounts properly. His computer died and all, like literally all his important stuff was gone. And so I said, well, you know what? You have to go over, they call them forensic hard drive specialists, and you have to go to someone really knowledgeable in that area. He paid 10 grand 
did you hear me right? 10 grand to try and get his stuff back. And I think in the end, it was something like 25% of his stuff got back. And it, 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 it's nothing to get this stuff working properly so that that would never happen to you. Like, it's just, it's sad, okay? Um, I receive files from various cloud storage. Is there a way to move them or do I just have to drag and drop? Oh, great question, Dean. No, you do not. In my program, I talk about this. You do not have to use, if someone sends a file, uh, let's say you're a, I don't know, a Dropbox user and somebody sends a Google Drive link. You do not have to be a Google Drive link, Google Drive person. You download it and you move it to where it should be, okay? But here's the caveat is that, that the, the person setting that up the sender of the file folder has to know how to send it properly. And that's what I teach, sending stuff properly, okay? I want it all on Google Drive. Yeah, you got it, okay. All right, so other issues that we fix inside our program is this dog's breakfast. <laughs> okay. if, you're, um, if your computer looks like this, and I, this is nobody's I know, I just took it off the internet. Okay. This slows down your computer and it needs to be fixed. Okay, It really, really does need to be fixed because it causes a lot of problems for you and your computer. Okay, And so there's ways to fix that. Um, Okay, and then this, do you believe that that's actually my desktop? Do we have oohs and ahs? All I use, I don't keep anything on my desktop except, no, well, nothing really, the recycle bin, except the bottom taskbar or uh, software I use all the time. That's it. So I don't clutter up anything. <laughs> Everybody's like, whoa, hey, it's pretty nice, right? <laughs> okay, any of my, the people that are in my membership, we can, we can talk about that another time and I can fix yours as well. I, I probably would have looked at it and went, oh, it's okay. A couple are fine, like a few th folders or shortcuts are fine, but if it's too big, it literally every time, let me go back to that last one. Every time that you bring up your computer, Mac, open up your Mac or your uh, Windows computer, it, this stuff here is attached to your profile. So if you've got like large, large folders of stuff, that's why it's taking so long, okay? That is a problem. And so what we don't want, see this, I can tell like this is a folder, this is a folder, this is a shortcut. We want shortcuts only. Now I've given you a good tip here. We do not want the folders, we want the shortcuts on your profile, on your desktop profile, okay? Hopefully that helps. Okay, that spilt coffee, so sad. Now I was gonna talk about, do we have time? I think we do. We were talking about sharing, so I am gonna talk a little bit about sharing. And this is just kind of a little bit of an overview, but what we do on every single, uh, and we, when I'm, I'm talking about like what I help Terry and I talk about in my program about, I always, th Terry's my guinea pig and if it works for him, then I add it to our program. So what this is, is that we get the link for the Stratadocs folder, okay? So we have the link that's a properly configured link with the right rights. So let's say we know how to do that. Then what we do is when we're sending it to the agent, we say, Hi, Joe, the agent, right? Here are the strata docs for 1234 Main Street. I have a few options to share the docs with your clients. You can forward them this email because the link that we've given is open. You can click and open and copy the link into the URL to give to your clients because maybe they don't want to have your name. Or you can download all the files by clicking on the download all link at the top right. And actually, we've changed this now. I should change this and you can move them to your cloud storage, the cloud storage of your choice. Does that make sense, you guys? Yeah, I hope that makes sense. Okay, so we use this, because we say this all the time, we use these templates in, uh, well, actually there's templates in all email programs, so it's pretty cool, okay? Okay, so we covered today, email cloud storage, computer cloud storage, and, um, you can have been, been in the business for like five years, eight years, 10 years, 30 years, and never kept in touch with clients, right? Because you can't figure out a way to do it that makes sense. And so you're chasing new leads all the time and it's so frustrating, right? So the real cost of you doing nothing is the money that you aren't going to make. I absolutely love this quote. 
The real cost of doing nothing is the money you aren't going to make, all right? And obviously the missed opportunities, and we may never know what they are, but when your systems are messed up, you got a high stress level, you can't find your stuff, you're not working efficiently, and you're losing a lot of deals. I actually was talking to um, um, someone who's come into my program recently, and I was their top high producer agent, and we figured out how much money they have lost over the last 25 years because they've never kept in touch with any past clients. And actually, it's, it's sickening when you think about it, but you should think about it, about how much money you've lost. His was close to uh, 500000 or more. He didn't want to, he says, oh, because we're going on the low end of everything. It's a lot of money, okay? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have the replay in the group, in our, in both group, our group and my business page. Uh, if you are not a member of our streamlined agents, uh, click on this link, Ray will put it in there and uh, go there and ask to join. We will post it there. It's always on the business page as well, so you can watch it. Um, next, we're gonna, oh, we're gonna do Archie. We're gonna review Archie. Okay, so let me just see, we're gonna, is that, you're okay with that, right, Archie? Let me just double check. Yes, okay, so what I like to do at the end of every webinar, we pick someone, I love that Archie was really fast and he knew the answer, so we'll review his online presence. Now, I, I might go over a little bit, you guys, today, maybe by five minutes, because I want you to see um, uh, what we do, and, and you should be doing this every six months. You should go look at yourself and look at how people find you, okay? I'm gonna switch the slide. For anybody who wants to uh, book a 30-minute strategy call with me, that's the link, Ray's put it in. And so I am going, thanks Dean, you're welcome. Um, I'm gonna review someone's online presence now. So look in the chat. We'll also do a follow-up email to you guys in case you didn't write this down enough or you don't understand how the chat works. Cause you know, everybody's at different levels. So Archie, let's go look at you. Okay, so let's just say, Archie, is it M-C-M-A-C-L-E? Oh, oh, I can't even do that. So let's just say, and I'm going to be brutal, okay, Archie, because I don't like lying about anything. So let's just say that I, uh, Archie and Joe Blow came in, and I'm selling my house, and I'm just going to go do a little research on both of them. Okay, so the other agent is giving me a package. Archie's giving me a package. I look through it. They're both, I like them both, and I'm just going to go Google and see, see what's up with Archie. So this is what's going to come up, okay? So I'm going to open up, this is, and every six months, you guys should go easy. Okay, I'll go easy. <laughs> every six months, um, you should go look and make sure that all this stuff is correct, okay? So first off, it's the Remax profile. So I'm just going to right click and I'm going to open up a new tab and I'm going to go look at that in a minute. This is, uh, and for Remax agents, any Remax agents out there, if you don't know that Remax gives you free websites, you should know because a lot of times you forget about it and incorrect information. We'll see that in a minute. This is the global Remax. Let me just open up new tab. This is realtor.ca. We'll open up that. And I'm assuming this is your brokerage. And Archie, what's your website? If you could put that in the chat, because um, let me just see your domain, your domain name, website name. Do you have one? Now, that what's interesting is that hasn't come up. Now, it might come up if I go Realtor. I do both of these. I usually just Google the person's name and then I might put Realtor. Um, okay, so no. So this isn't coming up, which makes me a little concerned or why isn't it coming up, but I will go and just put in um, Archie MacLean.com. Okay. Archie. Okay, hold on, now I'm confused. Okay, let's just start from here. Okay, um, let's, I'll come to your website because that is a bit confusing, but let's go here. So I look, hopefully that is a, now Archie, I don't know if we've ever met and I don't remember what you look like, but hopefully this picture is within the last five years. It's always shocking to me when agents don't update their uh, profile and you know, you know, I don't even have to say anything, you know what I mean, right? Hopefully that's your phone number, Archie, and we know that's your brokerage. This is your office uh, website, and this is yours, so I must have typed it wrong. Okay. Okay, can you see how that's really bad? 
Uh, okay. So you don't know if somebody went here, right? And they go, oh, okay, great. I'm going to go check out his website. And then we get this. You know what? That, that's bad. And we don't know how, other, how many other spots have this domain. So do you own that domain, Archie? I'm guessing you do. But I'm going to guess you're using this. Is this your actual website? Okay. So do you see why this is important, you guys? Like, I, I can't say definitively that Archie lost deals because people clicked on a link and he didn't look like he was in business anymore. Maybe they thought you were taught, retired and they just went on. But you can see that, that maybe that's happened, right? So I'm gonna, any, any Remax agents out there, this is so important. Okay, Archie, when we get off this call, I want you to contact, uh, where you're in Victor, where are you? Hold on, the seashell. I want you to contact Western Canada Support, and I want you to, if this is the what you're going to use, we want it to be ArchieMcLean.com or whatever you've said dot com, and not dot not the. Oh, sorry, I keep going to the wrong spot. Ah, here, and not ArchieMcLean.Remax.Net. Okay. Please, 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 and nothing else. To please because you're losing business because of this okay and I could comment more about the free remax sites and what I would suggest you do yeah this doesn't look good you should look at maybe um, taking one of their seminars I think they do them fairly frequent frequently easy for me to say <laughs> for uh, uh, updating the back end profiles and stuff okay so please 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 do that okay so I'm gonna just go back so we want to once you fix that, then this will work. Okay, let's also see if the social part works. Because this is when I see people change stuff and then... So I would probably remove... If you, do you use Facebook much for business? Because if you don't, what I would do is remove this as well. That's on the back end profile on the Remax Max Center as well. Okay. A lot, of, a lot of times what agents ask me is about the social side. Well, do I have to put Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and WeChat and, and whatever? And like, no, if you don't use it, don't put it on there, right? Because it's worse me than clicking on the link going, well, what? He doesn't even use it. Okay. Does that make sense? So that's what I say. And I don't think you have to be on social media. I, th I, I think, damn it, keep in touch with your clients. And then, and then once you've, Got all that set up. Then if you feel like using social, go ahead and social. Because there's certain benefits for sure of social. But, it, you know, if you kept in touch with your past clients, you'd be making a lot more money. Not you, Archie. Anyone. Anyone. I'm not being specific. Okay, so you're going to fix that. You're going to do something about that. Okay, that was the globalremax.com, and that's your phone number. And, again, they've got that. Um, they've got that. My brother's phoned me like three times. <laughs> like, is there an urgent thing going on? Sorry about the phone call, you guys. Um, so I'm going to have to cut this short in a second. Let me just see. This looks okay, but again, it's wrong. So if someone finds you on the global, they go here. It's not going to work. Ay, uh, ay, not good. So, and again, this is coming from realtor.ca. Hopefully that's your correct information. I go and check, does the email work? Is that set up properly? So anything that anyone might find. This is yours, your website. Yeah, broken all counts. That's the main thing for you, Archie, to do ASAP is to get uh, this to be called, is it called a redirect? Uh, you don't want to use this website. You want to use archiemclean.com, okay? Really, really important for you, okay? Because all these links are broken, okay? And then once you fix that, all the links will be fixed magically. That's so you guys get, let me just I'm turn on my video because we're just closing out. Okay, so you get the value of looking at your own stuff because sometimes we forget what we did. And so you might click on a link, go, oh my gosh, I changed my, I don't know, my Facebook page. And now when someone goes to your website, that link doesn't work anymore. So we literally have it in our CRM to check these things every six months to make sure we're not, we're on track, okay? Makes sense.